Hello, crew, and welcome to your 7 Minutes of Piracy. Happy New Year! Uh, as you noticed, we had taken the last two weeks off to um, get all the holiday festivities and spend time with family. We also had the opportunity to go camping over New Year's, um, which was very, very cold. Which leads us to our segment of today, as we were sitting in our RV, toasty warm, furnace going full blast, 17 degrees outside, by the way. And we're sitting there watching the river and it was cold. And we were kind of thinking to ourselves, how did the pirates stay warm on the pirate ship? They didn't have the modern luxuries. So that's what we're talking about today. Yes, we are. It was interesting because we were right alongside the river. We actually got to see a couple ships moving up and down the river and we were thinking about how did they stay warm, especially when it's when it's 19 degrees out. So we, we did a little research this week, and uh, the, the most popular answer that we were coming up with is that uh, they didn't. They, uh, they wore layers, and they tried to stay dry, but uh, depending on where you were, what season it was, uh, where you were on the map, uh, sometimes that wasn't even an option. So um, people on a ship, whether it was a pirate ship or a trade ship, a lot of layers, um, they used to wear burlap. They would have a couple different things that they would change out of. They would try and work in shifts, uh, maybe four hours at a time, and then go take a break, change some clothing, uh, get, a, get a break from the wind and the weather, and put something else on, but then they were right back out there. So, not fun. No, I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I'm bundled up in my, you know, my Columbia Omnitech, you know, high-tech, stay warm clothes, and, you know, just going from trailer to trailer because we can't. And you're still so cold. And I was still cold, and I, I just could not even imagine the uh, conditions. And I know I read somewhere also that they tried not to <clears throat> travel in the winter months, but sometimes it just couldn't be avoided, and they had to get out there on the open sea in the freezing cold. Um, they were sometimes fortunate enough to have a pot belly stove in the galley, um, so they would gather around that. There was also, um, as you were mentioning, they actually had fires on ships, which, which was really interesting. They used to have <laughs> a designated area, uh, whether it was in the galley or right below the main deck, where they would have a, a sand pit, if you can imagine, like a 10 by 10 pit uh, full of maybe a foot of sand. And they would build a fire out there, and they could, they could literally sit around the fire and get warm. It was, uh, it was something I hadn't thought of, and I hadn't come across until we started reading about it. Um, they would also uh, do some cooking on that. Uh, some of the ships at the time would have a like a cast iron stove or actually a stove up on legs above the sand pit that would protect uh, the, the ship and the, the wood from the heat of the stove. But also when they were trading out, uh, if they were cold or when they were in between shifts, they would come down, they would sit around the stove to, to get warm. Also, if the, the, the cooks were actually using the stove or cooking, usually right above the stove, there would be some grating uh, to allow the steam and the smoke to come up above it. And so um, some of the crew would sit actually on the wood grating right above that, uh, above the heat, let the heat come up past them or use that to try and dry out their clothes. Um, uh, a, a lot of, di I mean, obviously they got very, uh, very inventive when it came to ways for them to warm up and dry the clothing they had. Thank you. Something else that we came across um, they didn't have a lot of waterproofing at the time, but they did have tar available and oil cloth. So um, not their everyday clothing, but <clears throat> maybe their foul weather clothing. They would soak it in tar <laughs> or at least the outside layer in tar and try and get it so that the water ran off and, and keep them uh, a little more dry and protect them from the elements. But like Margaret said, none of the uh, uh, none of the waterproofing stuff, none of the Tyvek, none of the Omni Heat, none of the uh, none of the comforts that we enjoy today. True. So, your pirate drink of the week is inspired by none other than New Year's Eve. Um, so, this one's called the Berry Treasure. It has uh, strawberry puree. Yummy. Actually, I'm going to do this while we're, we're talking. Oh, why don't you do that and I'll talk. Okay, the Berry Treasure. Uh, three tablespoons of strawberry or strawberry puree. Puree. <laughs> I swear we haven't drank yet. <laughs> okay, there's that. Uh, half a tablespoon of lime juice, uh, which is good, prevents scurvy. Very important on a pirate ship. Uh, and then uh, half a cup of either champagne, pink champagne, 
sparkling wine, and then you garnish with uh, lime wedge and berries. Could be strawberries, blueberries, uh, blackberries. Uh, but again, uh, uh, alcoholic drink with champagne, New Year's Eve, absolutely. Are you going to do the shake and shake it thing? I'm going to do the shake yeah, and shake it thing. Get... No, I got the lid on it. Famous last words. <laughs> Oh, that's making a mess here. Margaret making a mess. Shocker, I know. Okay, hold on. You gotta take the strainer out. No, you're supposed to strain it. Because you don't want all the, the I normally bits. prefer more alcohol in my alcohol. Well, hold on. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah? Add some. Um, well, here, that gives us a tasting. Hey, very treasure. Here, happy new year. A week and a half late. That's not bad. Not bad. For champagne, which not yeah. really big. big By the time but... we're on take six, we'll be like, oh, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your pirate fact of the week. I've got a, uh, a short and sweet this week. Uh, a lot of people thought in the uh, pirate age, the worst thing you could see was a pirate flag, you know, back black flag, skull and crossbones. Um, uh, you know, every it seemed like every pirate of the time had a, uh, a different logo on their flag. Uh, actually, the black flag wasn't that bad. The worst thing you could see was actually a red flag with an hourglass on it. Uh, the red flag with an hourglass is actually called the no quarter flag. And when uh, another ship was flying the no quarter flag, that meant that they were not going to take any prisoners under any condition. So when you when you saw that flag, uh, it, it was bad, but it was also good because you you knew <laughs> that uh, surrender wasn't even an option. So it uh, allowed everybody to, uh, uh, you know what, uh, fight till the end, give it everything you've got because you know that uh, you're gonna die either way. So. I had no, I didn't know that. The no quarter flag? I did not know that. Yeah, bad things happen. Isn't there a flag that um, signified the plague? Like if there was a plague on board? There so was. It was a would... yellow and a black flag, but a lot of pirates used that to um, to kind of warn other ships. Like if they were about to be attacked, they would run up the plague flag uh, saying like, oh, don't attack us, we got plague. And so not everybody believed the plague flag. Oh, um, okay. So okay. just like when they were attacking another ship, and you, they would fly the same flag as that ship until they got close, and then they would swap it out for the pirate flag and say, Ha ha, we snuck up on you and we, we tricked you. So, so just another sneaky pirate trick? Another sneaky pirate trick. Um, we're going to finish off today. We're going to uh, talk about the book really quick. Uh, a new year, and I decided to do something different. I had some people asking me about... Um, I've had a couple of people ask me questions about the book, about characters, about pronunciation and stuff like that. And so I uh, actually made a website for the book to answer questions. And it is called... Wait for it. What? SevenMinutesPiracy.com. Did not see that coming. I tried to make it easy on you to remember. So if <laughs> you just go to www.SevenMinutesPiracy.com, squish all the words together. Um, it, it's a website that deals with the, the books, a little narration about the books. It's got a list of all the people in the books. Uh, it's got some links to our YouTubes. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to put a comment section in there. Uh, so far, I've told it can't be done unless I download some third-party apps on there and I'm not app savvy just yet. So I'm working on that, but I'd like to have a, a portion, uh, a segment on there where people could make comments and suggestions and that kind of thing, just like YouTube. So we can uh, ultimately get better and give the people what they want. Oh, an easier way to find us too. Right. And what the people want is more buried treasure. Oh, I'm drinking. Here, 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 here. Oh, that's nice. Actually pretty good. And it cuts down on the scurvy, very important. Because you, know, you got your fruit. So, New Year, we're going to try to be a little more regular with our shows, our episodes. Now that we're not sick, we're not camping, it's, night, it's not 19 degrees out. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, hey, thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. And um, if you have any comments, hey, put them in there. What, what, uh, if you guys have any ideas. Uh, three heads are better than two, right? We'd love to hear from you. We really do. Because I don't want to just be like a talking head. So we really would like to, we really would like to, to hear from, from all, all of 56 of you now. So 
56, hey. Yes, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Hey, short and sweet this week. So until we see each other again, fair winds, my friends. Bye-bye.